Hey, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co., and this is Board Game Upgrades, Deluxifications, some shirts and clothes and other things, this particular video. We'll go into all of it, timestamps as usual down below, and as usual, this particular series, this segment, the Board Game Upgrades and Deluxifications once a month video, is brought to you or sponsored by Top Shelf Gamer. Top Shelf Gamer, where you can get, you know, various upgrades and deluxified resources and inserts and sleeves and metal coins and a whole bunch of things. There'll be a coupon code down below, you can check that out for the next week. It is a referral link. When I say sponsored, it's primarily that they send me stuff and I get a referral link. That's basically it. Uh, but yeah, if you want to go ahead and check that out, you can go ahead and do so in the link below. But with that, let's go ahead and jump into the various stuff. And some of these are from Top Shelf Gamer. I'll usually talk about those when we get to them. We'll talk about everything when we get to them. And there's links to buy everything down below. And some others are referral links. Those will all be tagged down below. But let's go ahead and start off with... Let's start off with Watergate. Watergate is going to have deluxified... What? Um, you know what? Let's start with my, my shirt that I'm wearing, actually. Uh, this is from Mr. Meeple. This shirt that I'm wearing is from Mr. Meeple. There's also another shirt over here, in case you want this one over here. This uh, little print, let's go ahead and put that on the top camera if you want to see that there. But this is from Mr. Meeple, and it's basically... It's a store that I hadn't heard of until they reached out to me and said, Hey, we have a bunch of stuff, and we have an upcoming Kickstarter. And I was like... I don't really review clothes in a typical sense, but I do have an upgrades video where I do talk about fun stuff, and I can talk about it there. Uh, this falls in the category of upgrades and luxifications, although in this case, the thing you're upgrading is, well, your shirts or your clothes. Uh, we have a few different options here. They have a whole bunch of options. I don't know what's actually going to be on their Kickstarter or not. I just picked out a few things that I particularly liked from what they had, things that I would actually wear and enjoy. They have a lot of designs, a lot of options. Let's put these off to the side. They also have socks, which I'm a huge fan of because um, this is one of the few times you'll see me do this on camera. But we have these socks over here. We got the Meeple socks. We have the more standard traditional Meeple socks. Again, this is not my usual on-camera pose, but blue and orange. I mean, I couldn't not do blue and orange socks. They do have these in a few different colors. I think they had green and black, if I'm not mistaken, but I already have the green and black shirt. And then we have traditional, more colored Meeples as well. This is more boring, but I thought it was more traditional, and I will still like and wear these. But yeah, if you want to check out Mr. Meeple, again, they'll have a, they have their website if you want to check that out. And then additionally, they will have an upcoming Kickstarter if you want to check that out. I don't know what the differences will be. Will there be new products, discounted pricing? I don't have any of those details. I just honestly thought they were pretty cool designs. I mean, this is one of those war thingies. We have Spirit Island. We have Dune Imperium. I haven't actually, we have Anachrony, which I still haven't played. I really need to. But yeah, I generally like uh, different, different shirts and different t-shirts. You've seen me wear them on the channel before. And the nice part is nice weather is finally coming back. So I can actually start wearing t-shirts here again because I do these, these videos in a basement that is otherwise freezing in the winter. T-shirts are not a fit for this basement in the winter. In any case, from there, let's go ahead and move to Watergate, where I was going to before. Watergate is going to have the the upgraded tiles from Board Game Geek. Oh, and the top camera is not really on, so let's go ahead and fix that. Uh, apparently, those shirts I just showed you didn't show up on camera. So, I mean, they, they showed up the front, but not the top. Uh, but we fixed that. Okay, we're good to go here. But Watergate. Watergate is going to have Board Game Geek geek up tiles, basically. Uh, this is going to be a set of acrylic tiles for the evidence tiles, for the for the various uh, people you're going to be connecting to. Uh, that's what we're going to have over here. And we're going to have these tiles, where you have acrylic tiles replacing the cardboard tiles. These are nicer. These are chunkier. These are heftier. These are a significant improvement. But then additionally... On the evidence board, we also have we also have the following. So if we go ahead and put this out, traditional Watergate, and I will be replacing these components. I like this, I like these new ones a lot. I've already played with these. Sometimes when I try new upgrades or whatnot, they don't always actually fit. Sometimes I prefer the original. It's always a conversation or a question. Uh, in this case, I've already played with the new stuff, and I've only kept the old stuff around to show you the differences and the comparisons. Original Watergate has these tiles for the momentum and for the initiative, and these has push pins. Push pins. They're delightful. Look at these push pins. That's a push pin that makes it seem like it's a little a thumbtack into your board. That is an excellent upgrade that has such a premium feel in the way it actually feels like thumbtacks, you know, put into a variety of places, although you don't actually only ever have one at a time. But that is a significant upgrade. I like these a lot. As far as the bake light pieces, those are very solid. But they're, I mean, they're Bakelite. If you've used Bakelite before, uh, they're fine. Keep in mind, Watergate is not a game that needs upgrades at all. Uh, the components are totally fine. The punch board is totally fine. But if you want to upgrade your game, this is a very solid thing. I mean, the difference over here, let's grab some, let's grab an evidence tile and then let's grab one of these. So you can see over here, 
here is the difference between a new and an old tile. So we have this over here. We can see over here the differences. This is just, I mean, visually, they look at a glance similar, but one is Bakelite and one is cardboard. One is chunkier and more you know, pleasing to hold on to a handful of them. I like them. Uh, for me, for sure, this is the highlight as far as the upgrades and the evidence, the cardboard versus, uh, versus Bakelite, while certainly nice, it's one of those things that's nice. I mean, both of them are nice in a way that's nice to have, but also not essential. What I really want is some sleeves for Watergate because they do not have standardized cards at all. And it's one of my few games that I love that is still not sleeved because I haven't gotten around to hunting down custom sleeves for Watergate. From there, let's go ahead and dive into... Project L. A part of this deluxification series is the fact that sometimes I cover games that are not necessarily here is an upgrade or a premium thing that you can buy, whatever it is. Sometimes it's just the very nature of the upgraded set, and that's going to hold true for Project L. Uh, Project L, I recently got the finesse expansion for it, which comes with the expansion, but also comes with a bunch of other things that are, well, quality of life improvements, and they are pretty decent quality of life improvements while also not necessarily being essential. It depends on who you are and what you prefer. But you get this single big box as well as these component trays for your Project L Finesse expansion. It makes the whole thing a whole lot easier to store, especially if you already had expansions, if you're trying to make it all fit and work. Speaking of making it fit and work, I need to move these coasters off to the side so I can actually put this here without damaging stuff. But I will be covering the Finesse expansion in a uh, bundle up of a bunch of reviews together in a single video. But in this case, for right now, we just have the, the trays. Uh, these are, I believe, game trays. I'm 90% certain. I'm not 100% certain, but I'm 90% certain. Usually there's a logo. Yep, it's game trays. There's a logo there. You got the little logo there. Uh, game trays is actually coming out with their own game, by the way. Uh, game trays is in at least two of these games today. Uh, they're coming out with their own game that I should know the name of it, but I forget. It's basically, think of it as a little bit Western Legends adjacent, with a whole lot more going on. And we'll talk about that at some point in the future. But this is going to give you these coins over here. So you have these, these coins, which are these credits you can earn in Finesse as you accomplish different objectives on these tiles over here. But the point of this insert is to give you, well, the point of this upgrade is to give you a big box and to give you the game, the expansion, and then these trays. So you can have all these trays readily accessible. Uh, this tray over here is purely for storage in the box. It has nothing to do with gameplay versus these two trays are gameplay based based they're both going to have duplicate pieces so you can have two of these on the table between the players so that people can grab into the trays and grab the specific tokens they want as opposed to having to fiddle around with the bag this goes back to the part where i said it kind of depends on what your personal preferences are because uh, you may not care about the bag I personally didn't. For me, the quality of life of the ta of the table presence is nice, but far from essential. Versus the quality of life of the storage is where it's a lot more useful, especially if you have all the content for the game. That's where it becomes a lot more useful to have everything handy, handily dandily stored. I think that's the term. Handily dandily stored in this box over here. You also have dividers in this box. You can kind of see them down here to separate between the various uh, sections, depending on how you store them. I kind of store them in a way that I don't actually need all four, but I guess you could. Maybe it's based on player count, because you could separate based on player count, actually, the truth is. There's a few things you could do with those as far as how you want to store them, but that's kind of your choice. Uh, for me, I will put these in first. See, I haven't actually thought this through. I don't know if it matters at all, but I'm going to put them in. They all store nicely there. Then you put your rules and little player aids on top, and then you can just close the box, and that's Project L. Uh, Project L is an excellent game. Uh, the reason I wanted to cover it here is because it is a premium thing, and when I'm covering the Finesse expansion, I was just covering the expansion and not the whole big box, so I want to show you what you get with the Project L big box. From there, let's move to the left, where we're going to cover... Let's cover... Let's save Blood Rage for last. So the Blood Rage one is a fun insert that I have everything for Blood Rage. Like, ev well, with the caveat, everything for Blood Rage in that box. But let's cover Glenmore. Glenmore Chronicles is already a deluxe game to begin with. And in this case, I semi-partially upgraded it, but also I'm going to tell you about some of the upgrades I did not use. So first of all, we have these coins. Let's take those out. Again, I keep the old and the new when I do these, or try to if I remember, so I can show you everything. Uh, but I'm going to show you some of the expansion stuff we don't use. So so again, in general, this from Fun Tales, I have the expansion as well. I need to play with the expansion. It's been too long. Uh, by been too long, 
I mean, I've had the expansion for too long and I haven't played with it yet. But we have all these boxes with the various modules. Uh, Glenmore was a game that's out a while ago. They came out with a new version, which is the one you have on the table in front of you. The new version has all these modules in these boxes, so it gives you the base game, but then these modules, so you can now race around the track. You have additional boards, you have additional goals, and different things you're going for, each one stored in these little containers, just like so, you know, whatever. Uh, past that, we have all the components over here which are already pretty premium, which is a bit of the problem as far as this upgrade set. So, let's grab that out, let's grab that out, and let's grab this out. So, what we have over here is a case of uh, components, two component upgrades, one of which I'm using, one of which I'm not. Now, if I'm not mistaken, the Kickstarter version of Glenmore, which is not what I have over here, if I'm not mistaken, the Kickstarter version did come with metal coins. I don't have the Kickstarter version, so I got some metal coins from Top Shelf Gamer, which replaces these very, very, very boring, incredibly boring credits, okay? These are awesome. These I don't like. They already have these, and part of what's confusing as well is they have these kinds of tokens in terms of point tokens. So you have a very similar look, different but similar. At least these have numbers and a nice design on them. These feel like they could have been the punch board remnants of a game. Like they feel like they could have been like, hey, we have extra punch, punch board spaces and just poke these out and throw them in the garbage. But no, these are the coins of the game. So that's not really that satisfying. I don't love them. I do like these a lot more. These from Top Shelf Gamer. And I like these significantly more. Let's go ahead and show you some of these. So if we show you here, we have the little punch board components again with the design that's like not really designed. It even says Glenn Moore in the box. And then we have these coins, which are a little on the shiny side. The one thing I will say is I do wish these were tarnished a bit more. They're a drop shiny. They have a reasonable heft, not particularly thick, but they, do, they don't feel like too light either. Uh, but these are from Top Shelf Gamer. I'll include a link to all these things as usual. Uh, I do wish I could tarnish them. Maybe just playing with them enough over time will tarnish them. I mean, it depends how much time we're talking about, but it should in theory. And these coins will be going in the garbage, well, shortly, because I much prefer these upgraded coins. The thing I don't prefer, and I've had this issue in the past, I've had this issue with Viticulture. Viticulture is a game that I upgraded a lot of the components to 3D things, and I kind of went back, once I got sticker upgrades, I kind of went back to, to having uh, sticker wo stickerified wooden meeples. And a similar thing happened with me with Glenmore. You see, Glenmore has some tokens like these wheat tokens, the cows, the sheep, the, the, the ore, the, the wood. You have all these tokens which are just these wooden pieces over here. So you can see the wooden pieces, they're they're nice, they're shaped like wheat, they do the, the wooden thing that tokens do, I don't even know what that means. And then you have, you know, you have cows, you have sheep, you can see these over here, just cows and sheep, little, little wooden meeples for those different tokens. And then I got the upgraded set from Top Shelf Gamer, and this time around, I'm not keeping them. This is the second time it's happened with the upgraded resources. See, one of the things I love from Top Shelf Gamer is the upgraded resources. It's it's easily the favorite thing that they do from the stuff they do. They, like, like I said, they have inserts, they have sleeves, they have a variety of different insert types, they have a whole bunch of different things, some of which I'm forgetting. But one of the things they do is the upgraded resources, and so far, in one one other game I haven't kept them. And I mentioned at the time I wasn't sure I would, but that game is Tiny Towns. Tiny Towns is a game that I got the upgraded resources, and the way Tiny Towns works, I think the basic cubes work better. And so I ended up not using the upgraded resources and going back to the basic cubes. Like I said, it does happen. It's the exception, but it does happen. And this is happening too in Glenmore, although this one I was more on the fence with. Tiny Towns just took like one play before I was like, it just practically is more functional for the game. Uh, in this case, it's a question of personal preference and aesthetic. You can see these over here. Like, look at these sheep. They are adorable. But then we have these wooden ones over here that are also adorable in their more laid back, less in your face way. I, I think the main thing for me is the consistency of the, the tokens. All these wooden tokens feel incredibly consistent in the way that they set up on the board, the way they store. They feel like a cohesive unit versus in this case, because of the differences in token types, it's not as evident. It feels a little bit more disparate the way you have your cows. And I will show you these. Again, they are very cool. I did debate which one to keep uh, after playing with it, but I decided that I preferred the the original. Again, we have sheeps, we have cows. They're adorable. I'll have to think which games I can use them in because Honestly, when it comes to the wood, wheat, and stone, there's plenty. When it comes to sheeps and cows, I don't know how many games I can use these in. Which, And it's not just a question of which games have sheeps and cows. It's a question of which games have sheeps and cows. That I would want to use them in. 
and that it wouldn't be weird that there's only sheep and cows as opposed to other things as well. And then we have, you know, we have wheat, wood, and stone, which I've shown you in a variety of other videos. Uh, these are more common top shelf gamer deluxified resources that we've gone through in a lot of videos. Uh, the one downside, I've talked about this in the past, of using deluxe resources in a lot of things, is it loses some of the allure over time. The more games you have the deluxe wheat in, the less special it feels. And that's also possibly leads to my decision here as well. The idea that it does at a certain point start to feel a little samey. I'll put these back in here for now, but they are they are going away. I'm keeping these metal coins. They are significantly nicer. So yeah, so Glenmore is a bit of a mix. I want to show you them because I do think they're cool, but I am not using them in my personal copy of the game. So let's move on to, let's move on. Let's, we'll save Blood Rage for last, like I said already. And let's move on to Mission Catastrophe. Mission Catastrophe just showed up. And I unboxed it and then decided I wanted to talk about it and show you the game. So let's go over Mission Catastrophe, what we have over here. We have the new game from Carbon Alchemy. This just showed up yesterday. Uh, yesterday? Yeah, yesterday. And we're going to go ahead and open this up. Not doing a full unboxing, but showing you some of the stuff here. Because there's one particular moment that I was incredibly impressed by. Again, from Game Trace and from Mission Catastrophe, obviously. I, I still don't know, by the way. I opened this up and I don't remember whether this was on top or underneath. That's the one downside. Is there like a thing in the box? Sometimes I do these videos and there's like a thing in the box or there's a clear labeling somewhere. I haven't gone through the rule, full rule book. It's possible that the rule book tells me exactly where things go. It's even possible that if I pick up the insert, it tells me where things go. Nope, there's not, at least not under there. Uh, but this is the insert for Mission Catastrophe. Everything beautifully stored in a variety of different ways. So we have the various character cards over here. This is just a premium product, by the way. This is one of those times where I'm not showing you an upgrade you can buy. I'm showing you the deluxe version of the game and what you get in it, similar to an unboxing, just giving you an idea of what you can get. Uh, we have the various trays over here. We have these re these spots full of the like ridiculously thick dual layered everything. Everything in this game is double layered, and they are incredibly chunky premium tiles. I've talked about in the past. Punchboard comes in three main qualities. Again, not technical terms, just the way I perceive it, which is bad quality, normal quality, and chunky, hefty quality. This is definitely the chunky, hefty quality type, and that's even factoring for the fact that it is double layered, but still, they are incredibly chunky. We have our first player commemorative coin. This, I believe, is some draw labs, actually, but uh, for Mission Catastrophe. Then we have our little claw over here, where I've stored a bunch of the cubes, but that's where you'll have all the aliens and the little pods. Everything coming out beautifully, just like, you know, easily coming out over here. Just pulling these out. They have little fingerprints for everything. It's definitely game trays. You have that logo. You have all the aliens beautifully stored. This goes right back on top. We have our, our various bays and stuff. Just all the stuff. More tiles, more things. Again, I could be storing some aspects of this wrong. Like, there's a little segment over here. What actually goes there? I put the little coin there. I don't know what else actually goes there. Uh, we have our little trays we can pull tokens out. It is ridged, so you can just slide up along the edge, as opposed to having a fully enclosed uh, square where you can't really pull things out. We have our little uh, escape pods, our little modules where you are escape. I think these are our escape modules. Yeah, the little CF. You have to find out which ones are active, which ones aren't, as you go through the game. This is basically Nemesis Light. Yeah, Nemesis Light. The part that I was very impressed by, and we also, annoyingly enough, have a, a Quackalope card over here. So we have a Quackalop card. I remember this was actually being playtested way back uh, QuackCon Thanksgiving. We did a, they, well, not we, he, Quackalop, did a Thanksgiving online convention uh, two years ago. Not this past Thanksgiving, but the Thanksgiving before. That's when this game was on Kickstarter. That's when I uh, playtested the game, not playtested, reviewed the game, played the game, covered it. One of the things that particularly impressed me about this tray is the way you have room, perfect room, for two standees. Particularly impressed me. The reason is these are standees. You could easily make the user, me, you, whoever, remove the standee little thing at the bottom, take it off, and assemble or reassemble it every single time. Instead, they gave you these perfect little, little divots where you can put the assembled standees and it fits beautifully. I was very impressed by that. It's a very small thing. It's a very, very minor quality of life improvement, but it is a quality of life improvement. This feels like it should go here. There we go. Nope, nope. Does it go there? It feels like it does go here. Yeah, this goes here. This goes here. I found it. I found the spot. But it's a very, very small but but important quality of life improvement. This, on the other hand, I think this goes like this. This goes like this. And then together, this goes like that. Okay, there we go. I found it. I've, I've made it work. Uh, but yeah, you have... It's just a small quality of life improvement from Game Trays and from uh, Carbon Alchemy. But like the, the, uh, the idea that even with just two standees, they didn't sit there and say, no, you have to assemble this every single time you can just enjoy will give you a spot in the game for it. Again, small little thing, but a small little thing that uh -huh. does matter. Uh, past that, we also have 
very minor thing as well, but we also have these coasters from them. There's a little thing you can get in the Kickstarter. Uh, these are like little thin cork board. I do wonder how they'll hold up over time, but I like the artwork of them. Let's see if we can orient them correctly. I like the artwork of them. Just showing you the various little uh, modules. And they just it's just fun little coasters to have. They did the same thing with Flamecraft recently when that was on Kickstarter, but that is Carbon Alchemy and all the stuff there. Let's try to not knock my coffee off the table. And lastly, we have Blood Rage and Burnt Island Premium Card Token Racks. Uh, the reason I'm saving this for this is because we're going to have cards when we go through this. So let's go ahead through this. Now, you can ignore my very worn Blood Rage box. This is a game that has seen a lot of love, a lot of travel, and needs a new box at some point. Uh, but it's one of my favorite games. Uh, my favorite games do, shockingly enough, get played quite a bit. And this falls into that category. So, what we have over here is we have, well, a, a folded space insert that accommodates everything to date. It accommodates the... Uh, the, the the mystics of Blood Rage. It accommodates the gods of Blood Rage. It accommodates the to the promo box. If you back the second Kickstarter, it accommodates these golden large gods over here. Now it does have two caveats, two strong caveats. And yes, by the way, I put my painted miniatures up top. These are the only painted miniatures I have. I started painting uh, right before I did started doing content creation, and I was halfway through Blood Rage before I started doing daily videos. And I was like, I don't have time for this. So I have two clans or factions painted. And the rest, not. I have one upstairs in the middle of being painted for the past two years in the middle of being painted. But this is a folded space insert. Assembles very nicely, very cleanly. You can get these from Folded Space. You can get these from Top Shelf Gamer. I usually get most of these from Top Shelf Gamer. Unless they don't have the one I want, then I get it from Folded Space or wherever. Uh, but this holds everything. I'm going to go through everything, showing you the stuff. But let's go ahead and start pulling things out. You do want to glue these. They will not hold together properly if you don't glue them. But we have our trays of various people. You can see the bottom tray is missing the people who are in the middle of being painted. We have our gods over here. And now they do specifically do, they give you in the Folded Space insert a version for the retail versus Kickstarter god. So whichever ones you have, they have an option to make sure they're accommodating. The main complaint I have against this insert is going to be twofold. The first complaint is the fact that you do kind of have to know or remember exactly where, or print something out so you can see it, but you kind of have to remember exactly how some things configure. Some things you can figure out, these guys, not such a big deal, but these gods have a specific orientation as far as how they fit if you actually want them to fit. That's slightly irritating. We have our gods over here. Again, hopefully you remember over time where you build up the muscle memory, but this is still much easier than the bag solution that I had until now and storing it in two boxes. This insert actually got me from storing everything in two boxes to a single box. We have the rest of our gods here. So our gods, our gods, our player stuff over here between these boxes. We have more player things. It's another slight issue where all the player stuff are a little bit divided up. Not a huge issue, but slight issue. We have our remaining things there. And then we have our cards over there. Uh, we are going to take a slight break from this. You know, let's finish talking about this first. The one other complaint I have, I said there's two complaints. The one other complaint I have is because I have all of these upgraded from the um, thin stuff to the thick boards, they don't fit back in the box. Not in any reasonable way, unless I want a center pressure point holding the box high. I don't mind a lifted lid, but I only am okay with lifted lids if the weight is evenly distributed across the box. Part of the point of a box is you have the corner points, so everything kind of has this pressure pressure, so you're not bowing anything, bending everything, breaking everything. A lifted lid that is even across the board is kind of fine. And yes, you could argue I can put these under the bottom, but you still have a slight similar issue, just the pressure can still find its way to a center focal point. You want everything distributed. So right now, I'm kind of, I went from having two boxes completely, like the, the promos box and this box, to a single box, with the caveat that these are, well, kind of just off to the side. They're slid next to the calyx at the side, which does mean that if I didn't play this game, they'd build up dust over time. I'm sure I could put them in another box if I wanted to, but I don't know if I care enough. Maybe I'll bag them in a large box, but these are now outside the box. So that is a slight irritation with this here. It's great, it's excellent, slight irritation in that sense. Let's start putting things back in, although we will keep the cards available because I do want to show you the Burnt Island folded, uh, the Burnt Island card trays or whatnot. Let's go ahead and move this here, and here, and here, and this goes here like so, and like there, like so. And then we have our cards, which we will open up these trays over here. This is the Burnt Island Premium Card Tokens that they had in the In Too Deep Kickstarter. Let's just grab two trays out, we'll close the rest. I haven't decided how I'm storing these yet, but I do, I mean, it's a nice tray. I just, sometimes I keep those trays, sometimes I don't. And let's go ahead and put this down here, and like so, and show you how these trays work. So, the basic idea is you have a bunch of cards. Let's grab some cards out from over here. Let's grab some. We're not going to grab all. And then, we're going to put these cards into the tray. 
Now this is basically meant to be a card tray and the goal of it is, well, threefold. The first goal is to hold your cards. Okay, that's the first goal and it accomplishes that very well. It has three tiers on it. So depending on the cards, depending on how you're doing it, you could hold a decent amount of cards. Again, some information might be blocked. It depends on the game you're playing. Uh, but additionally, the second goal is to curve the cards a bit so that you can, so that you can, um, so that you can have them a bit more facing you as opposed to facing others where they're a little bit less useful to that and it accomplishes that goal as well. And then the third goal is that it curves the cards without bending it and it does that beautifully. I don't know how well you can see it on the top cam, but let's try to show you this. Right now, this over here, it's there's no bend. It has enough wiggle room that it holds firmly, but not so much wiggle room that it bends. And so this card is held perfectly in place. Granted, that is a smaller card, so let's grab a bigger card. And you can see as well, the bigger card also, again, hopefully you can see this, the bigger card also has no bend whatsoever. It holds the card in place, but there's enough wiggle room in there that there is no bend to the card, which was my biggest concern when getting these initially, that there would be bend and there's nothing. This is a fairly large card. If we put it this way, now there's bend. You can see it's now firm. The fact that it's firm means there's bend. You see, if I wiggle, there's, well, if I wiggle that much, it's fine. But when I wiggle this, if I even slightly drift it, it's just going back and forth. And that means that there's no bend because there's no tension. Tension would produce the bend. The fact that it wiggles back and forth means there's no tension. And that also means there's no bend. And I think I've said no bend 17 times in this video, but I think it's important because that was my main concern when I first looked at these. I was like, I like the concept. I think they're great looking. Will they bend my cards? And the answer is a somewhat firm no, unless you're using particularly large cards and placing them sideways. But these are the Burnt Island token trays. Let's put them back over here. And then let's figure out why my Blood Rage trays are not perfectly in sync. What's happening here? Are they perfectly in sync? It feels like they're a drop off. Are you going down properly? You should be going down properly. That's fine over there. You should be fine over there. You guys are popping through there just fine. It's interesting. See, this, this is a little bit lower. I think we're fine. But again, this goes back to the even weight distribution, where you kind of want, kind of want everything evenly weighted. But it looks like it's fine. And we'll put this in. Our Blood Rage cards will fall off to the side. That is fine. It's not a big deal. These are the gods of Asgard. There's probably a better place to put them in the box. I just haven't decided. You can tuck them in between inserts easily enough if you wanted to. I'm fine with them on top right now, but that might change. And that is the Blood Rage uh, folded space insert from, well, folded space and top shelf gamer. And that's everything. Uh, that's everything. Like I said already, there's links to all the stuff down below. I think the referral ones are Top Shelf Gamer and the BGG stuff. The rest is just our quality of life convenience links. But that's everything for this week's or this month's deluxifications and upgrades. The Me Mr. Meeple shirt, the two premium games, uh, Geek Up Bits, some deluxe resources and coins, a full space insert, and the Burnt Island Games token trays. Until next time, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. Thanks so much for being here, and as always, have a good one.